the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Amen. God bless you. Uh, I hope everybody having a great had a great week. Uh, I I did change the uh, font and put the uh, uh, the words. So I hope you read because when I was looking at the uh, recording, uh, the taking and copying or not copying, but actually reviewing the uh, the scriptures on on the on my Bible application. It didn't seem to come out real clear, and, and I'm hoping this will, and I'm going to check these out this week and continue to work on trying to make it better for people to read, because the intent is for people to read, right? Uh, the New Testament and the Old Testament, and like I said, I'm using uh, this format to do the Old Testament, uh, and take one, one chapter, <laughs> one chapter a day at a time is the intent, <clears throat> but I hopefully... Uh, we'll just keep growing. Because the main thing first is, and, 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 and you'll see on that one slide, is the, the importance of uh, taking time to, to read the scriptures one day at a time, starting from Genesis and making all the way to Malachi. Now, one of the things I was doing, and I think I need to just make it a little louder, uh, is, you know, hearing it in the... Uh, uh, the 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 Bible thing, the Bible experience. I was using that, uh, and and I, I think I'm gonna swap sometimes, go back and forth, uh, just reading it myself out loud because the the intent is to encourage you to read it as well, right? So if you see somebody reading it, you know you actually see a person reading it. Uh, it inspires you to do the same because you know the Bible says a study shows to show yourself approving to God. And instead of sitting there hearing people and some coming up with some spooky stuff, read the word for yourself. That's that's the intent. Read the word for yourself, and that's what we that's the goal, right? So I'm inviting those who want to catch up is to read the scriptures uh, together. You know, you go back and, and, and catch up on the, on, the, on the, I guess, my channel to see the ones that I've read so far. But the intent is to really get to read the scriptures and understand and let it unfold to you. Because what we want to get to is that to your point that you have read the scriptures and then incorporate it as part of your prayer life, right? And, and then once you finish, go back and read it again. Right, because think about it, when you read the Old Testament, you're really talking about going way back and reading it again, amen. So I think that's not. I think that's understood. The the you get more, you you catch more as you read it over and over again, so that you can understand the will of God. The Old Testament is really about the foreshadowing of Christ. Uh, it also showed the interaction between God and man. And how it has matured uh, up to this date and time. So take advantage of it and and read it for yourself, right? You know, and you got here DMI eight eight. That's to my uh, when I look at me, I look at you. Is to my left, right? <laughs> it feel like to my right, you know, because this is my right hand. Look at that! Isn't this uh, this is my right hand, right? I'm sitting there thinking this is gonna come up. <laughs> On on the on the camera, it's it's the mirror effect, correct? So on my left is the Nehemiah eight eight. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly, and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And that's what we want to get you to do, uh, and also pray. Um, maybe we need to start incorporating some of these packages, uh, ministry of salvation. So you if you if you don't know you're saved. Uh, turn your life over to Christ. Then you, you know we do something like Romans ten nine and ten. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Uh, 
the other one is importance of doing the Lord's Prayer daily, right? Uh, that's in Matthew chapter 6, you know, starting in verse 9, it basically said that, Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And we want to read the scripture so we can understand his will uh, from the Old Testament all the way to the New Testament. Uh, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And what he's trying to say is the will, the things that we should be, will be doing in heaven we should be applying here on earth, all right? And 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 that that's that becomes that relationship with God, you know. And you know, give me this day my daily bread. That means implies a, a daily interaction, a daily walk uh, with Him. Uh, and and then the you feeding your spirit, man, when you read the scriptures. And that's that's what I like about that. And then it says and. Uh, forgive us our debts as we give our debt towards. And the fact is that you want to give, forgive others as you ask them to be forgiven. And it's hypocrisy for you to think that you could do something different, expecting mercy and grace to you and not give mercy and grace to others. God wants you to do the same that he does for you. We all deserve mercy. We all deserve grace. Amen? Uh, and, and lead us not into temptation, Right? But lead us not into the things that's going to cause us to fall. There ought to be tests concerning obedience and loyalty toward him, not people. And that's the biggest problem, right? We get to the point where we believe in people instead of trusting in him. So let's work on that. Let's work on the fact of trusting in him. Amen? So we're going to go to the scriptures. And uh, what I do is I, I go and re-record these because it's very hard to do them daily uh, with all the other challenges. and you know, working full time. Uh, but we're going to focus on Genesis uh, 45 to 50 is what we work on. Uh, may, I may go uh, to another chapter because I really like to get like six recordings and then schedule them throughout the week so that when we start over again, you know, at least they popped up on the YouTube channel uh, so you can read them. But that, that's the intent. I just... Uh, Let's encourage you to read the scriptures. Amen? All right. All right, let's get started. Uh, we're going to start off with, let's see here. This is one of the chap chapter 45. Genesis chapter 45 is what we're going to start reading. And I'm, I'm reading it this time. And, and sometimes I'm going to use the uh, audio Bible. But the point is because it's the word. That's what matters, right? How we read the word of God is the critical piece, all right? So this one is Genesis 45, verse 1. The subtitle is Joseph provides for his brothers and family. Then, verse 1, then Joseph could not restrain himself if all those who stood by him. And he cried out, make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? <laughs> I can imagine that way. He's like, is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed in his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years, the famine, for these two years, the famine has been in the land. And there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. So now it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph. <laughs> oh, I know his father would be very happy. 
God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me and do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near to me, you and your children, your children's children, your flock and your herds and all that you have. There I will provide for you, lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty, for there are still five years of famine. And behold, your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my mouth that speaks to you. So you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and of all that you have seen, and you shall hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell on his shoulders, Benjamin's neck, and wept, and Benjamin wept on his neck. <laughs> Moreover, he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Now the report of it was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brothers have come. So it pleased Pharaoh and his servants well. And the Pharaoh said to Joseph, say to your brothers, do this. Load your animals and depart. Go to the land of Cana. Bring your father and your household and come to me, and I will give you the best of the land of Egypt, and you will eat the fat of the land. Now you are commanded to do this. Take carts out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and your wives. Bring your father and come. Also, do not be concerned about your goods, for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. Then the sons of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them carts according to the command of Pharaoh, and he gave them provisions for the journey. He gave all of them, gave to all of them, to each man, changes of garment. But to Benjamin, he gave 300 pence of silver and five changes of garment. And he sent to his father these things, Ten donkeys loaded with the good things of Egypt, and ten female donkeys loaded with grain, bread, and food for his father for the journey. So he sent his brothers away, and they departed. And he said to them, See that you do not become troubled along the way. Then they went up out of Egypt and came to the land of Cana to Jacob, their father, whose name is also Israel. And they told him, saying, Joseph is alive. <laughs> And he is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob hot stood still because he did not believe them. But when they told him all the words which Joseph had said to them, and when he saw the carts which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. Then Israel said, it is enough. Joseph, my son, is still alive. And I will go and see him before I die. Hey, man, you could, you know, I don't know about you. I could, I, you know, breathe it again. And I, and man, I've been read it many times, but this is the first time I really got that, that emotional feeling of how it, it had been for Joseph and his brothers to be revealed to one another, to Joseph, to Jacob, to be able to hear that his son, his beloved son, you know? His beloved son, that, that, that Rachel birth, his first son from Rachel, is alive. Can you imagine that? Knowing that for years and years, he, he, he thought his son was devoured by animals. And now he's alive. You know, he's the one that, that got the, 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 the uh, coat, the many colors, because of the love that the father had for the son. And, 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 you can imagine, I, at least I'll say I've imagined it. It's, it's the same thing as as you come into the gospel and understand that God wants to reconnect with you. Uh, that makes a difference. And that's why I just encourage you to read these scriptures and, and, and put yourself in their place. Get a feeling. You know, a lot of cases we, we, we hear other people read the Bible and it seems so pomp, pompous and and the stiff and rigid, you know, it's, it's, it's the Bible's alive. And we should look at it from that perspective. Amen. All right. So that's the uh, chapter 45. Like I said, we're going to read five chapters, 45 to 50. Uh, and uh, we'll just 
continue to grow in the things of God. Amen. Amen. So this is a this will be a break. And then we'll pick up on 46. All right. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.